Hello and welcome to a new unit, this time on memory and storage. Today we're going to be starting by looking at what we call primary storage, or more commonly referred to as memory. So we're going to be looking at the need for primary storage, the difference between RAM and ROM, the purpose of ROM in a computer system, the purpose of RAM in a computer system, virtual memory, and all that sort of good stuff. Data and programs need to be stored in a computer system. Software programs and data are stored long term on secondary storage, for example, your hard disk drive. However, the CPU cannot access a program directly from the hard disk or other secondary storage. It needs to be loaded by the operating system into what we call primary storage or main memory. That's RAM on a typical computer system. Once the program or data has been loaded into RAM, it can then be accessed by the CPU. So when we talk about primary storage, that's the same as main memory or primary memory, depending on the textbook or the website that you're studying from, these all have the same meaning. So primary storage can be RAM usually, but it can also involve ROM and virtual memory, which we'll discuss in today's lesson. In future lessons, we'll take a look at what we call secondary storage or secondary memory. And this is things like your hard disk drive, USB memory sticks, DVDs, and so on. Let's start with RAM, random access memory. Bighorn RAMs. This holds the programs and data currently running on the computer. It holds the operating system while the computer is running. This can be accessed directly by the CPU. The term random access means that data can be read or written in the same amount of time, no matter the physical location of data inside the memory. RAM is what we call volatile. If it loses power, the contents are lost. So if the power fails, for example, the computer is turned off or there's a power failure, even for a moment, then everything that was stored in the RAM will be lost. So RAM temporarily stores data, serving as the computer's working memory. You need secondary storage for a long-term storage when the power is going to be turned off. RAM is typically measured in gigabytes of memory. A typical personal home computer will have from around 4 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM installed. However, people who run applications that require a lot of processing may have 64 gigabytes or more of RAM installed, but that's more unusual. When a program is loaded, it is copied from secondary storage, such as the hard disk drive, into RAM. Any data associated with that program will also be stored in RAM, so the CPU can access both the data and the instructions. Once data and instructions are in RAM, they are then transferred to cache memory in order to further improve data access speeds for the CPU. With more RAM available, more data and applications can be stored in it. Because RAM has fast data access times compared to any secondary storage devices, this leads to better performance of the system. Consequently, adding more RAM to a computer system may allow demanding applications to run faster, the computer to run many programs at the same time without slowing down, what we call multitasking. Moving on, let's talk about ROM, read-only memory. He's so cute and very sexy. Cute. Sexy. ROM? ROM is non-volatile, does not require power to retain its contents. However, traditionally, it is also read-only. The data stored in it cannot be changed, overwritten, or removed. In the past, we often used ROM to store important data, such as how to start or boot the computer when it is first turned on what we refer to as the bootstrap loader, and the hardware settings, the BIOS, the basic input-output system. And this was located on a chip in the motherboard. However, please be aware we don't 
use ROM chips like this nowadays on modern computer systems. On modern computer systems, we use flash memory chips to hold the bootstrap loader and the BIOS. And flash memory can actually be overwritten and changed. So you can update your BIOS from the manufacturer as new versions become available. However, in the exam situation, whenever you see a question about ROM, it is referring to the traditional type of ROM that is read-only. In the exam, they really like you to know the difference between RAM and ROM to be able to compare and contrast them. So again, this is very much a typical, old-fashioned, what is RAM, what is ROM situation. So these are the kind of the main difference highlighted here. RAM, you can read and write to RAM. Traditional ROM is read-only. RAM is volatile, it requires power. ROM is non-volatile, it does not require power. RAM is used to hold data and instructions currently in use. ROM is used to store the bootstrap loader and the basic computer hardware settings, the BIOS. RAM is usually measured in gigabytes of RAM installed. ROM is usually just going to be a few megabytes. Virtual memory. Virtual memory is probably the most tricky section in today's lesson to understand. And this is a really good section for you to pick up marks in the exam. It always comes up. It's a little bit complicated, so often it's a three or four mark question. As RAM fills the capacity, the operating system can temporarily mark sections of the hard disk or other secondary storage to use as virtual memory. Virtual memory can be accessed by the CPU and is so classed as main memory or primary storage. Like RAM, virtual memory is also considered to be volatile. Data and programs that are in RAM, but not currently being used, can be moved by the operating system into virtual memory. The programs and data that are currently being used by the CPU remain in RAM. However, it is much slower to fetch data from virtual memory. Remember, going from the hard disk drive to RAM is a slow process. So the operating system tends to swap programs in and out of RAM and virtual memory as they are needed. However, this constant switching between RAM and virtual memory can lead to a high rate of disk access. This is sometimes referred to as disk thrashing. You can hear the hard disk working when this happens or see the hard disk light on your desktop blinking constantly. The computer's performance therefore tends to slow if virtual memory is being heavily used. If disk thrashing occurs often, it may be a good time to upgrade your RAM. So we look here, we've got our hard disk drive, we've got our primary storage, we've got cache, we've got CPU registers, etc. So you look here, you can see in my main memory, my primary storage, I've got quite a lot of free space here. So if I want to load in a new program or more data, I can easily copy that in from my hard disk drive or my SSD. It can fill in another chunk of my RAM. And then that data can then get transferred to cache and then onto the CPU registers for that fetch to code execute cycle for the programs to be calculated, etc. However, in the second situation over here, we've got a bit of a problem. The primary storage, the RAM, is all used up. So if I want to load in a new program or new data from my secondary storage, there is nowhere to put it in RAM. What happens? Does my computer just crash? Does it say, I'm sorry, there's not enough memory, you're going to have to do something else, close down some of your applications? No, it uses virtual memory. So in this case, it takes a section of my secondary storage and marks it as virtual memory. It then takes maybe a program that's being used in RAM, but isn't currently being used, it's in the background, it's not currently being used by the user. It takes that data and then moves that into virtual memory, like temporarily storing it on the secondary storage. It can then take the program or data that I wanted to use and then move that into the free space that's now available in RAM. And then the computer can then obviously take that, move it to cache, move it to the CPU registers, for execution. And this can constantly happen 
while the computer is operating. It can constantly swap programs and data from RAM to virtual memory to keep the programs and data that you want to use in the primary storage, the RAM, and the programs and data that maybe you're not using right now, move that into the virtual memory until it is required. If we take a look at the memory hierarchy, we'll see that our RAM kind of sits in the middle of the memory hierarchy. It's pretty fast, it's pretty large, and it's pretty inexpensive. So that makes it very suitable for being used as the main working memory of our computer. For long-term storage, we've got things like hard disk drives, SSDs, which are larger and slower. And to speed things up, we can also use cache memory, which is a lot faster, but a lot smaller and a lot more expensive. So we like to use a combination of all of these to keep our speed working as fast as it can, but in a relatively inexpensive way. Obviously, the programs and data that we want, we want to kind of move up this hierarchy through all the chains until it gets to the registers. And the stuff that we don't need, we can move down this hierarchy so that we can use it later. So let's summarize today's lesson. RAM. This is volatile memory and data is lost when the power is turned off. RAM is used to store the operating system and programs and data currently in use. ROM. This is non-volatile memory so that data is retained even when the power is turned off. ROM stores hardware settings and the boot-up instructions for the computer. Virtual memory. This is part of the secondary storage that is used to supplement the main memory when all available RAM is being used. In the next lesson, we'll start looking at some secondary storage devices. Have a great day.